Hey, what's up, Comic Wow? This is Gigi coming at you from Baltimore Comic Con 2015. We're on day three, wrapping things up. We've had a fantastic weekend, but one of my favorite parts right now is that I am getting to talk to Kevin Hawk of Handsome Devil Comics, and we're going to talk about an awesome title, Fantasy Killer. Okay? Hello. Kevin, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I just told before the interview, I'm like, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, and then I just rolled with it, so no, it's good. we're going to get a little more in depth. That was though. a good intro. Okay, so I picked up last now, uh, last night as I do a lot of the social marketing and social media for Comic Wow as well, and you actually quoted one of our writers on Comic Wow and yep. used it as a promo for the con. Why don't you tell yep. everybody about that? So last year, Baltimore Comic Con was like my first ever con I've ever done. Uh -huh. I only had one issue of my first ever comic that I wrote, and A.D. Borman picked it up mm -hmm. um, early I got here early on a Saturday morning and he was walking around and he picked it up and I read the review and it said that the book was like the Hamlet of serial killers so that was so cool and it stuck that we did like a limited edition poster this weekend commemorating it it's, it's our lead character Alex here um, but he's holding a skull like Hamlet yeah and, uh, and we put the quote on there and, that's so awesome because yeah, that was special to me I mean it's my first book and just hearing that kind of feedback like it really fired me for like, sure I mean who doesn't so, like a uh, parallel to such a literally oh, a no story. famous more famous writer than Shakespeare so exactly. Having that parallel is awesome. Why don't you tell our Comic Wow viewers who aren't yet familiar with the Fantasy Killer title? I know okay. we're down, we're already on three. issue three of four. Yep. Let's start from the beginning and give okay. them a little background on the story, okay? All right. So, so lead character here, Alex McCormick. He works at a retail. He's a retail worker. He's very frustrated. He works at a store. It's a spoof of Apple. Okay. Sort of called Einstein Squad okay. <laughs> slash repair shop. Um, he deals with all kinds of annoying people, um, and he's so frustrated with his life, he starts having these crazy daydreams that he's killing people he knows. Mm -hmm. You open the first page, and he's like standing in a crime scene, and he says it's really happening, but then it jumps back three days, and the whole four issue series shows this normal, likable guy and how he like started having these delusions and got to that scene, mm -hmm. like, and kind of lost his mind. That's pretty dark. It's dark, but it's 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 more of a it's turned into more of a dark comedy than a horror. Uh -huh. Like it's not really gory. Yeah, I'm not against score like I like horror people movies. People today favor dark though. Yeah. It's funny. I always yeah. say like my sister's like why do you watch so many shows like that like Forensic Files and like SVU but partially I feel like I'm preparing myself for if that ever happened in life yeah. but at the same time I think it makes us appreciate our own lives even yeah. more that that's not happening right. but um, so was this your specific your particular brainchild? Yes. Like you came up with this yes, and where creator. do you remember back to where you were oh, yeah, when a, you thought of a this? A magical place called Sears <laughs> <laughs> where I worked in my early 20s and the the craziest people would come in and they'd come in they try to return three-year-old power tools they'd uh they'd come in and talk for like 20 minutes i mean it happens at the cons too but at least it's cool comic book nerds. and you fantasized about killing them i, I don't <laughs> want to say that per se but i was like if i was this guy that i'm thinking about then yes. i would <laughs> yeah you could just you can at least understand where people get those kind of thoughts yeah. from i get it i would they would back then they were kind of comedic thoughts like what if i just hit this guy with the chair that was next to me yeah. you know what i mean like just yeah. like yeah just snap. Now, so, so you're working at sears you're not in the industry at that point no and you come up with this idea and where do you go from there like what comes next it kind of uh i thought about it for a long time like i didn't know first I was like, maybe I'll write a movie script. I mean, I've, I've been in comics since I was a kid, but I didn't know anything about writing them, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was going to do a movie script or a novel. A novel seemed like overwhelming to me. Yeah. I'm, and then a movie script, I was like, if I finish a movie script and nobody ever does anything with it, it's not even fun to read. Yeah. They look, you know what a movie script looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got, I got really, really into comics in my mid 20s, and I was just like, this should be a comic. And I was a, in a do-it-yourself self mood, so I was trying to like pick up drawing again, and I was hashtagging things on Instagram, like drawing, and, and what happened was a girl named Lee Jeffrey liked my picture, and I went on her page, and I was like, yeah, I should probably quit. I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not going to be this good in like 10 years. You were years. like, I am no Lee Jeffrey. Yeah and, yeah, and her work was so amazing, and I just took a step further and contacted her, and she had said that she'd heard from a lot of people, but she really liked this premise. And so she, awesome. we just went to work, and she's been amazing and like great to deal with. And that is so cool because yeah. actually, as we're getting into it, I'm going to jump to this question now just because it ties so well into what you're saying. I was telling you before the interview, and it left you perplexed. Mm. There's been one question I've been asking everybody, okay. but just because as, this being our home con, I think it's really important to be able to help encourage other people and show them how you get into this industry or yeah. you know, encouraging them to follow their dreams. So if you have one piece of advice that you could give somebody, right. somebody who's sitting here now in your third issue, of four right. out in print who started at Sears, right. you know, 
what piece of advice would you give hopefuls out there of what you know when it comes to trying to break into this industry? Anything about it? Whether I mean, it's character you know, advice or whether it's actual work advice? I want to give work advice because I, I do a lot of things. I mean, this is my passion. Yeah. But I think a good advice across the board is if this is what you really want to do, then like just bleed for it. Because yeah. like like I'll go to like I'll go to signings at Third Eye Comics or anywhere. I'll hand out flyers to the line. Third Eye in particular because they sell the book. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But I'll hand out flyers. So you know, Scott Snyder was signing last year and or this year, whatever. I'm losing track of time. And okay. I, I went they to the, to blend together the line after was four hours long because he's amazing. Yeah. But I handed out flyers to everybody. I was like, hey, Scott's awesome. I'm here for him too. But if while you're in there, if you want to support a local writer, here's my flyer. Here's what the book's about. Mm -hmm. Like, just just bleed for it. It's hard work. Like, yeah. you know, I had a big thing for my day job last weekend. I'm dead tired, but and I don't yeah. get to choose when Baltimore Comic Con is. Oh yeah. But I'm sure as hell here because yeah. this is this is what matters to me. So, and I'm so thankful yeah. that we're getting the chance to talk to you because one, I think that story is really inspiring. People often believe when they see somebody else who's in the industry, they're like, um. Uh, they knew somebody from day one or they you know hooked up right. with the right people they don't really recognize it is a lot of just hard, work, hard work and putting yeah. it out there yeah. and that that's the best way to earn it to begin with anyway because yeah. then you have you know that credibility from everyone else and you know the respect right. so I think that's an awesome inspiring yeah. story Thank you. so when yeah. can we expect issue four to come out well issue three just came out two weeks ago we're okay. getting quick like issue one to two took quite uh, quite a while AD called us out on it a little bit uh. but you know we got day <laughs> jobs we got things to do so but from two to three it was a lot quicker I, I'm hoping to get four out this year for sure so oh, and fantastic. i would be happy with that because that would mean we got three out in one year and for indie people i'm totally cool with that <laughs> yeah so when now that you're delved into this book you're delved into fantasy killer when yeah. issue four completes mm -hmm. where do we go from there is it another story that you already got kind of cooked up in your mind as I have, to go on for I handsome have several. devil i'm really excited like i like horror stuff but i want to branch out i like you know i read what everybody else reads i uh -huh. read everything marvel everything yeah. image all this stuff so i i'm gonna do a big baltimore story next is one big thing it's called swan song i oh, won't cool. get too far into the storyline right. but i have an artist from around here that's going to work on that with me because I thought it'd be cool to have two Baltimore boys doing yeah. this story like actual this, there's a lot of Easter eggs in Fancy Killer like for Baltimore don't uh -huh. get me wrong but this is going to be like every scene is going to be at a real place I think like that's it, super exciting yeah. I love that kind of stuff as a hometown girl yeah. I love hearing that kind of stuff yeah. so I'm going to do that and then since I'm the writer I want to have several things going at once so I think that I if, if she's willing I want to do a, a series with Lee again because Lee is amazing so whether that's a horror book or I have several I have an ongoing series I'm working on too but I just got to be ready for it that's a big undertaking like, uh -huh. I don't want to, you know, but I'm really excited about that, too. So by, well, by uh, this time next year, I hope I have at least two books, like, in full swing. Like, well, it seems like your momentum yeah. is really kicking ass through things. So props to you on that. And it's, you. again, I think it's really inspiring to our viewers. And that's what I want to put out there is just remembering, like, this can happen to anybody. The passion is what matters. The passion is what matters Absolutely, because it's yeah. not even the talent that matters half as much as the passion. Right. But if you've got both, like you do, like, yeah. you really can go somewhere. And even so if you don't just have up. the passion, the talent, I mean, if yeah. you keep at it, you always get better. It doesn't matter right. anything in life you'll get better yeah. like so mm -hmm. you can get by with passion and less talent but you can't get by as much with a ton of talent and no passion you right. will fizzle off no, well remind everybody where they can find out more okay. about handsome devil comics about you yeah. know fantasy killer let them know besides your booth right now since the right, con right. is ending it's and we ending, can't send yeah. them over there right. but i'm sure they'll be able to find you at another <laughs> upcoming yeah. show if it's wandering around handing out flyers handsomedevilcomics.com <laughs> okay. you can you can order i'll send signed copies to your house um comiXology has the first two issues they take a while so issue three will be on there soon by soon i mean at some point while well, I'm still alive, I hope. But it, it takes forever. <laughs> so, but, um, so you can get them there. Third Eye Comics sells, they keep them all in stock. Uh, they're amazing. Um, and I'm sh I'll be doing cons. I don't know when my next one is. I think okay. I'm going to go do North Carolina. Well, do you have a Twitter they can North follow Carolina. you on or a Facebook yeah. that they can yeah, find you directly? Uh, Instagram, it's The Incredible Hawk, H O C K. Okay. Uh, Clever. I like that. Yeah. And then when I got to Twitter, uh, I had to put a one on the end, so it's incre uh, incredible. Hawk one. One. I know. <laughs> fail. So fail. Um, um, Facebook. It's uh, Facebook.com/slash Fantasy Killer Comic. Okay. Yeah. Well, fantastic. I'm sure our viewers, as much as I do, after this interview, look forward to finding out more about everything that you're into. Thank we you. look forward to seeing you again at the next con that we're at together, or since you're local, bringing you into the studio and keeping up with you there. I'm I keep hearing about this office. I gotta oh, check it out. Yeah, uh, yeah. See the Iron Man. He yeah. lives there. So Does he? Nice. yes, you'll you'll get an idea once you come in there. But thank Can't you so wait. much for the thank time. Thank you guys for support. Everybody, really of course, it. for sure. No Everybody problem. check out Fantasy Killer again. Issue 3 just dropped of 4. Make sure you get the first two issues as well so you can keep up with the story. But until next time, this is Kevin Hawk. I'm Gigi, and you're welcome.